What is up everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Josh, this is Overlanding Now, and today what we're talking about is the real life tow test that I did with our 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness. As we know, these vehicles are rated to tow a decent amount, and what I did is I got scientific with it and I took it down to the scale. Um, I took a bunch of measurements. I tried to be as scientific as I could without overdoing it and keeping this super simple for anybody to follow. And it's a lot of good information for anybody who may be considering towing with your Subaru Outback. So if you've towed with your Outback um, and you have experiences, I would love for you to drop a comment below because all of the information that I can get from others is extremely helpful for me and it allows me to give more information to other people. So. Stay tuned. So some of you may be asking, why, why are you even doing a tow test with a dad wagon? Well, the reason I'm doing a tow test with the dad wagon is because it's important for me to know what the vehicle's capabilities truly are. And I think anybody who is building a Subaru Outback or an Outback Wilderness for a overland vehicle, towing may be something that you do at some point, whether it's a small trailer, um, maybe some stuff around the house. So we do have plans that I don't want to get into today to add something to the vehicle and to our adventures that's going to make it more reasonable for us to travel long distances for longer periods of time. So I knew that we needed to figure out before we took off on the road and got ourselves into any type of situations, what this vehicle can actually do. Now, the tow capacity of the Subaru Outback Wilderness is 3,500 pounds. And if you guys had watched any of the other videos about more of a comparison of why we got rid of the Jeep JL and got a Subaru Outback Wilderness, they have the same exact towing capacity of 3,500 pounds. But what you need to understand about tow capacity, if you're unfamiliar with towing or you have not done a significant amount of towing in your life, and this is kind of new territory for you, just because your vehicle is rated to tow 3,500 pounds or more does not mean it is safe to tow that much weight. Um, maxing any vehicle out with its maximum capacity of tow weight will make for an extremely uncomfortable ride. I'm not gonna say it's unsafe, but it is uncomfortable because you do receive a lot of suspension sag and it makes it harder on your brakes, harder on your suspension, harder on your frame, harder on your motor. So I always like to try to stay just below that 75% mark when I do any type of towing. Um, my diesel truck was rated to tow 21,000 pounds. Regardless of how powerful and strong that truck was, I never felt comfortable maxing that out. But if I got up into the 10, 12, 13,000 pounds, I wasn't concerned because I knew I was kind of under that 75% threshold. So that's something that you should keep into or take into consideration, no matter what you're towing with or what you're towing. Now, I wanna provide some context here. So what I did is I went down to the SCAT the cat scale, which is about a mile from my house. Um, <clears throat> and I have a small homesteader trailer that we decided to try to tow with this. It's a trailer that we use for work stuff and it's always behind my house. And it's roughly the footprint of maybe like a, an adventure trailer of some sort. So I loaded that thing up. I keep a lot of miscellaneous items in there, but I wanted to make it as heavy as I felt comfortable with and as heavy as I felt that I would actually intend to tow long distances with it. So according to the cat scale, that trailer weighed 2,200 pounds. So like I said, that is within that 75% threshold um, and 2,200 pounds is still a significant amount of weight that most people, and that's one thing that we wanna take into consideration here, most people will not be towing more than 22, 2,500 pounds really ever. Now, if you unless you have a boat um, or you tow with a trailer a lot for work, but you typically have a bigger truck. So anything that you need to do with a Subaru, you can really get it done. So the trailer itself weighed 2,200 pounds. But then what I did is I added some additional weight and I added some weight to the interior of the vehicle. So I added two 45 pound dumbbell or um, barbell plates to the rear of the Subaru, just 
because when we travel, we typically have gear in the back. I also added um, 150 pounds or 140 pounds up front to simulate somebody in the front seat. And then what I did is I put two kettlebells in the back driver's seat, which equated to about 70 pounds. And then in the back passenger seat, I put another 53 pound kettlebell. So I did my best to, to simulate what it would be on a real life trip, what it would look like if we were truly taking this thing across the United States, um, because there is going to be additional weight in your vehicle without having that additional weight in just me, that's not a realistic representation of what this vehicle can do. So the total vehicle weight at the time when I weighed it was 4,200, I'm sorry, 4,720 pounds. With a 2,220 pound trailer, that brought us up to 6,940 pounds. So we are within that GVRW, we're good with everything that we need to consider in terms of weight for the vehicle. So the total weight of 6,940 pounds. Once I got that weight, I just took off driving. And I reset my trip meter um, for the gas mileage because I think gas mileage was one thing that I really wanted to consider. When I was towing our small camper across the United States with the Gladiator, we got about eight gallon or eight miles per gallon. Uh, granted, that vehicle was lit, or you know, my Gladiator's lifted. It has bigger tires on it. You know, all of those things. But with a th the the camper itself, dry weighed three thousand pounds. With our gear and everything else we had in it. I'm going to say maybe 3,600, and it was very, very hard for that Gladiator to tow that, that trailer. So I wanted to make sure I wasn't getting into another one of those situations. So I reset the trip meter and I took off driving. And during this drive, I did end up losing a GoPro that flew off the trailer at one point, so I don't have all the footage that I had when I started this. But what I did is I took off driving and I knew I wanted to drive 50 miles and I knew in those 50 miles, I wanted to do some highway. I wanted to do some just back roads where you're going 45, 50, 55. And then I wanted to do a little bit of city and I did just one big loop and then I came back up towards my house. So after that entire 50 miles, 49.9 to be exact, we were averaging roughly 10 and a half miles per gallon. Now I'm going to say that if I was on a longer distance trip, and I was more highway speeds for a longer period of time, I'm comfortable in saying that that probably would have gotten up to around 12 and a half or 13 miles per gallon because I would have been cruising at highway speeds for a long period of time. That would have consumed less gas. But that's not the information that I got by this quick 50 mile tow test. So what I can say is after 50 miles, now those 50 miles also incorporated some other tests that I wanted to do because there's other more important things to this as well. So 10 and a half miles per gallon after a 50 mile tow test. To me, I can honestly say that that is really good. I, it's not great, it's not the 20, 22 miles per gallon that you're getting with nothing in the vehicle and no trailer, but I did not expect to get that type of gas mileage. And also the trailer that I'm pulling in this, the Homesteader is, it has a V nose, but it's still much taller than the vehicle and it's still pretty boxy. So it's not the most aerodynamic trailer either. Um, and that definitely probably played a, a part in the results that we got. But I think this is a really good representation for anybody who wants to tow. Now, the next thing we want to talk about is your suspension sack. So as I mentioned earlier, if you're towing with a vehicle, and you're towing at its max capacity or anywhere in between zero and max, you're going to have some suspension sag. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a little bit of a squat. Um, and you'll see it when you see trucks pulling trailers down the road and some of them are really, really squatting. And that could be a mul that, that could be several different things. It doesn't necessarily mean that the trailer's too heavy for the vehicle because anytime you put a load on any type of spring, you're gonna get some type of compression. Well, with 2,200 pounds in the trailer and all the weight in the vehicle, the suspension was sitting at roughly 33 inches. So what I did is I grabbed my T-square from my garage and I placed it on the fender of the vehicle and right at where the fender was at its highest point is where I put the T-square and it was 33 inches. 
Once I compressed the springs and threw that 2200 pound trailer on top of it, it compressed down one inch, okay? So now we have one inch of suspension sag. And one thing that I've heard of several times from other Subaru owners is that the suspension in the Subaru, um, any type of Subaru Outback is a very soft suspension. Well, I don't know if that's true, or I do know that some type of retuning was done for the wilderness, but I don't know if there was any more um, strength or rigidity added to those rear springs. But with a 2200 pound trailer, that suspension sagged one inch. And why that's important is because what happened in the front was you get the opposite effect. So with the 2200 pound trailer, it went a half inch up in the front. So what happened was we lost a half in the back and we gained, I'm sorry, we lost an inch in the back and we gained a half in the front. Why that's important is because when you're towing anything and you have that suspension sag, too much of that suspension sag is A, extremely hard on your suspension itself. Um, it does become hard on your brakes. And when you start to create that V and you're towing a trailer down the road and you have to slam on your brakes and you're, you've already created a V because your trailer's higher than your car, your tow hitch is down here and your suspension is sagging, you now have this V that's been created. So slamming on the brakes could cause that trailer to come off of that ball and hit the rear of the vehicle. Is that likely? No. But it's something that you have to keep in mind and that's why having an even load and making sure you're within a realistic limit of your vehicle's ability to tow is important. Another thing that's important for us to keep in mind, and I've mentioned it already, is braking. So depending upon the type of vehicle you have, the Subaru Outback Wilderness came with a four pin trailer connector, um, the trailer wiring connector for the brakes or for the lights. Now a four pin does not have the ability to control trailer brakes. That trailer doesn't have trailer brakes anyways, but it doesn't have the ability to control the trailer brakes with a four pin connector. So if you get your trailer hitch installed from Subaru, it is going to come with a four pin connector. And what that means is you're not gonna have trailer brakes. So you're gonna have to either run a 12 volt back to the rear of the vehicle so you can attach a seven pin connector. That way when you plug into a seven pin harness on a trailer, you then have trailer brakes. We don't have that in this trailer and in this vehicle. So what I did is I took off down the road and there were a couple of opportunities for me to pretty much slam on the brakes. And in the Gladiator, that was a problem. You had to really pay attention and try to keep your distance because if anybody slammed on the brakes too much, and even though there was trailer brakes in it, that vehicle was just so heavy already. It already had big tires, a lot of overland gear, plus a trailer. I really needed to go up to bigger brakes there. Um, but it did surprisingly well. And I'm really, honestly, kind of impressed with how well it braked with that trailer behind it. Now, I didn't get into a crash situation, so I don't know what would have happened had I locked them up at highway speeds. But what I'm trying to portray is that at a reasonable slowdown um, from 45 or 50 miles an hour to a really quick deceleration, the brakes in the Subaru Outback Wilderness did absolutely fantastic. I was sincerely impressed with the way that this vehicle braked with all of that weight behind it. Now, the other thing is acceleration. Um, in the Gladiator, I keep bringing that up, and that's because this is like the latest horror story I have with towing, so it's something that's fresh in my mind. But with the Gladiator, it has a 3.6 liter V6, and it is a dog. And towing anything with it, not towing anything with it, it's just not a motor that provides you any type of torque. So trying to get up to highway speeds when you're already pulling a trailer that is way less than it's uh, weighted rating to be able to tow, it was still extremely difficult to get up to highway speeds in, in like a comfortable way. So with the Subaru Outback Wilderness, what I did was I just slammed it. Um, I was at a stoplight and I just hit it and I pushed the pedal all the way to the floor. And quite honestly, <laughs> the turbo in the Outback Wilderness is so helpful in these types of situations. When I was getting onto the highway, I had a guy that was like in front of me and I needed to get around him. So I just punched it and I went right around him. I mean, I am, 
I'm almost beside myself at how well this vehicle has done with everything that we've done to it so far. Now, what I want you to know is that we do have um, BFG KO2s, 245, 65, 17 tires on the Outback Wilderness. They are a bigger tire than what comes stock so that it does take more to rotate them and it also takes more to slow them down. And I am absolutely blown away at how well this vehicle has done so far. So in closing, um, I have yet to be disappointed by the Subaru Outback Wilderness in terms of a daily driver, in terms of its comfort, its reliability, its ability to tow now. The next step is taking this thing on a long range overland trip and seeing what it does. Today is Saturday the 8th. You'll probably see this video tomorrow. We are leaving on Friday the 14th or the 15th? I don't really know. But well, we are leaving next Friday and we're gone for a month. And we are taking the Subaru Outback Wilderness with us. And we are absolutely stoked to be able to see what this vehicle can do because so far there has been not a single complaint. Um, and I'm really excited to see what it can do in some true off-road situations. We are going to really take this thing and test it and just live out of it for a month. And I'm so excited to be able to bring that to you guys. So anybody who has any questions, please feel free, leave those in the comments. I usually get to them every morning. I try to stay up on it. Sometimes it gets away from me. But if there's anything that I can do that can provide you a little bit more information, I would be happy to do. Um, if you enjoyed the video and you found it helpful, share it with somebody, share it with the Subaru community, like it, um, leave a comment. All of that stuff helps the channel grow. And for me, I, I genuinely appreciate that. So next time you see me, it'll probably be uh, in the sunshine of the Southwest. Have a good one.